There's hardly any advocate for organic products and healthy lifestyles that does not know the iconic Dr. Bronner's brands of soaps and other products. What you may not know, it's how seriously Dr. Bronner's for the past 50 years takes its philosophy and ethical standards into its process of sourcing ingredients, producing the product, and engaging the employees in community participation. Hold on to your seats as we go behind the scenes in a rare interview. The interview which follows will blow you away. Meet the future of sustainability and social responsibility. Meet Dr. Bronner's. So um, it is very unusual that a product has values and a philosophy of life that's part of its brand. How did this begin for Dr. Broners and how have you been able to maintain this profoundly beautiful philosophy that your dad and your granddad have set? How have you and your brother been able to carry that on? Um, well, most of this is, you know, my granddad, like mm -hmm. just, you know, he, for him, the soap was there to sell the label. So if you see our label, it's got my granddad's philosophy. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't want to hear what he had to say, he would not sell, sell you soap. I mean, for him, it was, the label was not selling you soap. The soap was there to as a vehicle to, to transmit his message. Mm -hmm. um, so we always had this like very principled, like like what we're about is way more than so if we're making money, but about a much bigger mission. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, my dad, you know, in a way translated this in a much more practical way. He like, he's the one who really implemented a lot of the progressive employee practices we have. Mm -hmm. um, but like when me and my brother came in, you know, we took on the drug war you know, I committed to honoring my granddad by putting the five to one cap in place. Mm. And, um, you know, and then. There, so you put that into place. Yeah, I put that. Oh, in wow. Place. Well, wow. it wasn't an issue before because we weren't making enough money to worry <laughs> about it. But I could start seeing like where we're going, you know, I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, OK, we're on a rocket ship here. And mm -hmm. like, we got to like be true to the, to the principles. And by putting the five to one in place, that mm -hmm. kind of locked things in. Like, So yeah. speaking of the five to one, I've read somewhere most companies uh, or uh, uh, the average of companies do 276 to one mm -hmm. where how did you come become so like low of five, like maybe the 50 but you decided to do like five so where, how i did mean it's just like in? man like you know you're coming up and you know i didn't come up in, with a lot of wealth or whatever and you know five times you know trust me we're living great you yeah. know i mean it's yeah. just like what more do you need mm -hmm. you know and it's just like we're, we're about a much bigger vision and you know, just chase, and, and you can see how your um, expenditures rise and meet income. You know, you're just like, oh, I want the bigger house and a faster car and whatever. And I got a, you know, plenty pimp car. Unfortunately, <laughs> you guys missed it. It's like an old 75 diesel, like, but with chameleon colors. Oh, wow. Stuff. But anyways, um, yeah, you know, five to one, it was just like a number that, you know, like within this five, like here, we can rock our lives and that's for us to have fun with, but all the rest, that's for everyone else. And yeah. So um, for a very, very long time, Dr. Bronner's have been identified with the principles of universal love and world peace that has made it an iconic product for those who want a new and better world. How have you managed to keep those type of principles as part of your manufacturing workforce and ethic in this capital marketplace? Um. Well, I think our activism, in a way, really does build the brand. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we instead of advertising, we're very activists. So, you know, we, we're very activists on behalf of fair trade and income inequality, and mm -hmm. we work on the minimum wage issue a lot. Mm -hmm. um, on drug war reform, we're reforming cannabis policy and legalizing yeah. cannabis. No one deserves to have their lives shredded or their families' lives shredded and ripped apart over something that's much safer than alcohol. And in fact, you know, per personally speaking, is a you know, as my, my daily meditative ally that helps me kind of check in with my, you know, deeper, higher self, yeah, yeah. you know, and just be in touch. And um, yeah, and it's ridiculous that our law enforcement resources and taxpayer dollars are, mm -hmm. are being wasted in this way. So, um, you know, we, uh, by engaging on these fights and throwing down like we do, we're in the news a lot. Mm -hmm. So it helps build the, the overall brand and, our, and the success of the brand. Mm -hmm. And then our, our workforce, I mean, they, mm -hmm. they're psyched. You know, they show up and they get that, hey man, we're part of this company that's going to the mat on what a lot of our people believe in. You know, and they have family that have, yeah, they, that are in jail or, yeah. or have been touched in some way by injustice. And they're just psyched by the fact that we're 
engaged and fighting like we are. So, so um, it seems that Dr. Broner is one of those is one of those kind of rare companies that put the environment and moral issues above the interest of making profit. Um, you know, the five to one type of rule um, of your fair trade, which we're going to talk about a little later. Um, how is it that you guys have been able to keep that going forward um, and still be still stay so profitable? Well, I mean, it's, um, you know, the six principles, you know, it's basically, you know, we just make sure we are running a really good business. We, you know, you know, cost discipline and being efficient, make sure our margins are sustainable and we're making enough money. Um, and um, but then, yeah, being smart about our marketing, like when we do do what we do, just you know letting people know what we're doing yeah so people get jazzed and yeah and you know and i think with the millennial generation coming up there's like a lot more interest in in authenticity and Mm -hmm. you know we let them know like hey you know this is what we're doing and people are like yeah that other soap company's not doing jack you know we're doing cool stuff so so are you guys well received by millennials you think i think so yeah you know I'm yeah. millennial. I like you guys. Yeah, yeah, right so, uh, w- and now with the millennials now taking over the workforce and kind of going to that, um, do you guys have any millennials on staff? And if so, how do you guys engage with them um, and your evolution of a product? Yeah. Well, like our social media, you know, yeah. obviously we've got a, you know, n- no one who's not millennial gets it. Including <laughs> me. So, yeah, you know, so our whole social media, you know, marketing team mm-hmm. is, is mostly, you know, younger cats coming up and, mm-hmm. you know, and they're, you know, they help us, you know, I, I can't even talk the language. I don't know. <laughs> Rock Instagram. <laughs> and stuff. Retweet you know? something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, we got so. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, and, but we have like, you know, like uh, Stacy, who's our, you know, heads up our social media is vegan and really I'm personally vegan. Are you? Yeah. How is, th- so it's this thing that's running around. It's like a, a documentary about, um, I said, what's the health? I think this name oh, of yeah, it, okay. uh, some type of documentary. And I'm too scared to watch it because I am a meat eater. Um, <laughs> how did you transition into veganism? How long have you been in that? Since 96, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just, you know, waking up to the fact that, like, as eaters, as like, like the plate is our farm, and, yeah. and our knife is a butchery knife, and our fork is a pitchfork, and it's oh, like, wow. what kind of farm are we supporting, you know, how is that animal treated, and I have a, um, we actually just wrote a blog called Regenitarians Unite, mm-hmm. and it's how omnivores, vegetarians, and vegans can come together in a you know, we can agree to disagree about eating um, meat and dairy so long as the animals are treated correctly. Yeah. Um, and we support farmers that do high level livestock operations and our taco truck, we use grass fed beef. Like we actually subsidize the, and, and make sure they're using grass fed beef and not, not a When you say subsidize, farm. what do you mean? It means we're actually purchasing the grass fed beef ourselves as a company and giving it to the taco truck and then they charge normal prices. So you're not paying extra oh, for the grass fed. Oh, wow. Wow. And then we do like a vegan lunch on Wednesday, mm-hmm. free. But then the taco truck does like, and then pasture chicken. So you're making sure that, you know, chickens aren't in little cages, which pretty much if you're not like really paying attention and you're just buying whatever meat, it's mm-hmm. just going to be a disaster. It's just horrible. So you got to like really know what you're doing. So and, what type of meat for like me or any other meat eater out there, um, if they want to still support the cause, maybe can't give up the bacon. How, can, what should they be looking at? Yeah. Or how does that, like, what should we do? So go, so uh, animal welfare approved, like the, the high level certifications are certified humane. Mm-hmm. So look for a certified humane seal or go to their website mm-hmm. and you'll see like, okay, here's the brands that are certified humane. Mm-hmm. Animal welfare approved is another really good certification. And then if you go to like Whole Foods, like if you go in their meat section, they'll have um, uh, points mm-hmm. and it'll be one, two, three, four, five. And it's, that's the global animal partnership. Um, oh, wow. and, and the higher the number, that. the better the lives of the animals. Mm-hmm. So four is where it gets good. It's like basically mm-hmm. if you can find you know, Whole Foods and, and other markets where they do this, um, you know, look for four because that's where it's pasture based and mm-hmm. not inside in a cage. They're running around outside. So that's that's the way to look for it. Yeah, so I need to be looking for some uh, bacon that has a number four on it. I got you. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. right on. Number uh, four. Uh, we'll be right back. And once we come back, we'll be continuing this conversation with David Bronner. Hey! 
what y'all think about this video. Leave some feedback. And most importantly, comment and share. See y'all soon. I, I don't know why I really just did a southern accent, but you kind of get the point. Oh, also, if you need a DJ and professional MC, hit me up. I'm your guy.